Mathematics takes a lot of effort to learn, and in order to put forth a lot of effort, you have to be motivated. So I think that an individual's motivation is more important than how they learn math. For example, a really motivated person can pick up any book, maybe a book like this one, and they can learn math from this book. I don't think this is a bad book, but I do think that this book has characteristics which could be better. In this video, we're going to take a look at this book and we're going to talk about the pros and the cons so you can decide if this is a book for you. This book is called Methods of Real Analysis and it was written by Richard R. Goldberg from Northwestern University. Here it talks a little bit about the author. Richard R. Goldberg is an associate professor of mathematics at Northwestern University where he has taught since 1957. Prior to that, he was a mathematician at the Atomic Power Division of the Westinghouse Electric Corporation. He received his BS degree at Northwestern in 51 and did his graduate work at Harvard where he received his PhD degree in 56. Professor Goldberg's mathematical research has been in the field of integral transforms and harmonic analysis. He's the author of the book Fourier Transforms published by Cambridge University Press. This particular copy of the book is the second printing which was printed in 1965. The preface talks about who the book is for and gives an overview of the contents. This is a textbook for a one-year course in analysis designed for students who have completed the ordinary course in elementary calculus. Now, I want to emphasize that you really want to know how to write proofs before you jump into a book like this. It's still fun to read if you don't have any proof writing experience, but you're going to have a very hard time. Knowing how to write proofs, I think, is a huge help with a textbook like this. The contents are actually really interesting. There's a nice mix of topics. He starts with sets and functions, then sequences of real numbers. These are things you might see in an undergraduate advanced calculus course. Series of real numbers, limits and metric spaces, continuous functions on metric spaces, connectedness, completeness, and compactness. Calculus, the elementary functions, Taylor series, sequences and series of functions, three famous theorems, then we actually have a chapter on the Lebesgue integral, and then Fourier series, so really quite nice. Here we have a definition where he describes what it means for one series to be dominated by another series. So we have the sum of the a's and the sum of the b's. They are series of real numbers. We will say that the sum of the a's is dominated by the sum of the b's if there exists a n such that that inequality there is true. The absolute value of little a sub n is less than or equal to the absolute value of little b sub n for little n greater than or equal to big N. And he does this because he's basically creating a setup for what he calls the comparison test. If you've taken calculus to most calculus textbooks call this the direct comparison test. So here he states it. If the sum of the a's is dominated by the sum of the b's, where the sum of the b's converges, then the sum of the a's also converges, and the convergence here uh, is absolute. So he does it in terms of absolute convergence, whereas in a Calculus two class, you would just do it in terms of convergence, but you would make the extra assumption that uh, a sub n and b sub n are positive, so something subtle and different. So it's not exactly the same. That's one of the things you get from reading older books and reading different books on similar subject is that you get different presentations and Goldberg does that in this wonderful text. So I do think a lot of people would consider this text not so good, but I think it's very, very clean and I just have to give it a whiff. Oh, it smells so good. Here is something that many people might consider to be a con. One final word, the reader will soon discover that there are no pictures in this book. This is because we believe the reader should learn to draw his pictures as early as possible. The reader is urged to draw the graph of every function he encounters when possible and to use diagrams to aid his intuition. Presumably the instructor will help with the rough spots in this task. That's great if you have an instructor, but if you don't have an instructor and you're doing self-study, it makes it harder. So that I think could be a really big con to someone who is trying to use this book to learn on their own. But I do think that you know the way the book is laid out, just the typesetting, the structure, I just gotta give it another smell. Just it smells so good. The book has really good exercises, some of them being pretty tough. 
And that's good, but it's also bad because the book has no solutions. It would be incredible if this book had solutions to the proofs, but it doesn't. And that's the case for most books at this level. This book has really cool mathematics that you don't find in other books. For example, here we have a theorem, which you don't really see this in every math book. If you have a non-increasing sequence of positive numbers, and if that series converges, then basically the sum of the terms of your sequence also converges. And then he gives a proof and he uses it in the next page. Here he gives a corollary of the theorem to show that this series converges. Note that this is a p-series, so if you took a calculus 2 course, you would say that this converges by the p-test with p equal to 2, and it would converge because 2 is bigger than 1. So again, you see the same mathematics but in a different light using a different result. So really, really cool to have uh, you know, a book like this. So if you think about the fact that this book has no answers to any of the exercises and there's no graphs or illustrations in the book at all, like zero, then many people would consider this, I think, a bad math book. But you can still learn from this book. And honestly, I don't think it's a bad math book. I think it's a good math book written by a wonderful mathematician, you know, Richard Goldberg. I don't know if Goldberg is still alive. I tried to do some research before making this video and I, I couldn't find any, any information, but this book was written long ago. Uh, I think it said Goldberg got his PhD in 1956, so that was a long time ago. My copy of this text has a dust jacket, which is really cool. Having a dust jacket is a big plus for a collector. If you collect books, books that have these jackets usually carry somewhat of a premium. I don't know how expensive this book is. I'm pretty sure it's not that expensive. I will try to leave a link in the description after I make this video and post it because you might be interested in this book. I think it's pretty cool. It's got good exercises. I just really, really wish it had solutions. My intention with this video was just to make the point that you can learn with any math book, even if you think it's a bad math book. Here we have a book that covers analysis and it has no answers to any of the exercises and it has no illustrations. But you can actually still learn from this book if you put forth the effort. If you sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and you take your time and you read this book and you work through the examples and you work through the proofs that are given in the actual text, I think you can learn a ton of mathematics. It's really about the attitude and I think Having old books like this, at least for me, just, I don't know, it just makes me like math more. I just gotta give it another whiff. Oh, wow. I wanna emphasize that the prereqs for this book are knowledge of proof writing and some calculus. So if you've had some calculus and you know how to write basic math proofs, you can pick up this book and you can try to use it to learn. Again, the book is called Methods of Real Analysis and it was written by Richard Goldberg. I think it's a good book, prose, it reads really well, it smells really good, at least my copy does, and the proofs are just really clean. Cons has no solutions to any of the exercises and there are no illustrations. Overall, I think it's a well-rounded book. And remember, you can learn even with bad math books. Good luck.